welcome. A 2019 research by George Mason shows that the fossil fuel industry has tricked the public by funding climate denial research and campaigns. They're desperately trying to convince you that they aren't destroying the earth. And has it worked so far? Why? Because there is an element of truth to it, a little truth that has been tangled into a web of lies to satisfy their sabotage of the earth. But what story could be conjured up to justify water pollution and global warming? We're going to debunk those lies and look at how oil companies are destroying the earth. So who are they exactly? Oil and gas companies are making a mess of the planet, not just by feeding our fossil fuel addiction, but by failing to clear up after themselves. The oil and gas industry is one of the largest sectors in the world, generating an estimated 5 trillion in global revenue as of 2022. They can be classified into three sections, the upstream, the midstream and the downstream companies. The upstream companies find oil and gas around the world and they are responsible for the extraction. Some companies that come to mind are Shell, Chevron, Mobil, etc. They drill and extract raw materials from the earth. These companies are often known as ENP, which means exploration and production. The midstream companies are responsible for the transportation, moving the extracted raw material to refineries to process oil and gas. They include shipping, trucking, pipelines, etc. While the downstream companies are the refineries and the gas stations you buy gas from. Oil refineries remove impurities, converting oil and gas to public production such as gasoline, jet fuel, etc. All three of these stages generate a substantial amount of toxic and non-toxic waste for the public. Among all human activities, fossil fuel combustion is the largest contributor to carbon buildup in the Earth's biosphere. In 2017 alone, the International Energy Agency reported that oil and gas use comprised over 55% of the record 32.8 billion tons of CO2 released into the atmosphere from all energy sources. Oil had always been a part of the human race, dating as far back as 600 BC, when the first oil had been discovered by the Chinese. With the rise in technological breakthroughs, so did the demand for oil. Venezuela has been an important oil producer since 1914 and today it has the largest oil reserves in the world, estimated to be 300 trillion barrels. This represents 18.2 of the global oil reserves. So how is oil damaging the environment actually? Everyone who drives has probably driven behind the truck several times and smelled the terrible fumes that it emits. And that's just the consumption phase. Emission happens in every chain of the oil producing process. In the refinement stage of petroleum, there are large amounts of pollutions in urban areas. Due to the toxicity of oil, this has adverse effects on humans. A study conducted on the effects of oil refiners in Taiwan found an increased occurrence of premature births in mothers that had lived in close proximity to oil refineries than mothers who lived away from oil refineries. Unborn children are dying all because of oil refineries. Approximately 34% of cities monitored in China experienced acid rain in 2020. Why? Simple. China has relied heavily on coal for electricity and steel production. And the combustion process of coal is responsible for the increased occurrence of acid rain. Normal rain is slightly acidic with a pH of 5.6, while acid rain generally has a pH between 4.2 and 4.4. This increase in pH is caused by two things, nitrous oxide and sulfur dioxide. These are byproducts from combustion, which combine with water in the atmosphere to create acid rain. Acid rain can kill trees and kill fish by acidifying lakes. The largest accidental oil spill in history happened in the Gulf of Mexico, killing 11 workers and injuring 17. The gas traveled up the rig's riser to the platform where it ignited. The oil platform capsized and sank two days later. Up to 134 million gallons of oil were released and about 2,100 kilometers of the US Gulf Coast from Texas to Florida were coated with oil. The most damage that has come from the extraction, refinement and transportation consumption of oil has come in the form of carbon dioxide emissions. But you can see this is a tricky one. We can't completely abandon carbon dioxide because without carbon dioxide, Earth would be too weak to keep the average global surface temperature above freezing. 
but with too much carbon dioxide, we are supercharging the natural greenhouse effect, causing global temperature to rise, and we run a risk of global warming. Carbon dioxide levels today are higher than at any point in human history. If global energy demand continues to grow rapidly and we meet it mostly with fossil fuels, human emissions of carbon dioxide could reach 75 billion tons per year or more by the end of the century. Conditions not seen on Earth for close to 50 million years. In conclusion, some oil companies try to make people believe that climate action will hurt them and hurt their pocketbooks in particular make people think we need fossil fuels and try to convince us that climate change isn't such a big deal and others have generally taken action to invest in renewable energies and stay green to the public perception as the world deals with climate change. Some states in the US have also moved to ban the sale of fossil fuel powered cars by 2035 and move towards zero emission malls and EVs. This is all in a bid to curb emissions and in turn halt human caused climate change. You can also contribute to this by making your car green. Choosing an energy efficient car is an investment that saves on fossil fuel. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video and let's combat climate change together. Thank you.